do kind of a review question. class there was about half the people were there of course it's an 8 a.m. class the day after spring break so I was curious how many people would come yeah um, so hopefully I had a good break uh, sometimes it doesn't go as to plan I'm sorry if it wasn't a good break I'm sorry uh, of course the better it is the harder it is to come back that I can understand right I had a pretty good break uh, so now we're back are there any questions before I get into stuff? Okay. Yeah, like I haven't looked at stats. Mm -hmm. About a week and a half, John. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So let's see if this works. Let's see if anything's working up here. Yeah, okay. I'm going to do a quick example using this guy. So, if I give you information, so it comes from a normal distribution, so tell you it's normal, I tell you the mean is 111.3, and the standard deviation is uh, 29.18. Sort of. Okay. Could you figure out very quickly the probability that if I pick one thing, I get something that's more than uh, 90? You need to borrow a calculator. I've got some up here. As always or most of the time. Sorry, buddy. I wasn't even looking. There you go. Thank you. I forgot sure. to let you know. Um, I went to leave class a little early. It's my work with the schedule. I'm at like 3.45. Yeah, you also need one of these, right? Yeah. Practice right. test. Yeah. And then just in case you leave before I get to it. Yeah, if you're going to work on that. Cool. Technically, you can, you can do the problem without drawing a picture, but I highly recommend drawing a picture. So if I draw this picture, what goes in the middle? The mean. The mean? 111.3. What else do I put down there? No, no, no. Yeah. I don't want to go up and down any standard deviations. Uh, I could be a lot more specific now. That's why I only use empirical rule. But now I want to put 90, because that's the point I'm curious about, right? 
So this is going to get a little weird. The problem is x greater than 90, which means x equals 90. I need a z-score for that. So x is 90. When I look it up in the chart, that's going to give me an area that I can work with. So this can get confusing sometimes because what am I going to put into the z-score formula? What do I want to convert to a z-score? 90 minus 90. 90. Good. I want to make 90 into a z-score. So it's going to be where I am from the mean divided by the standard deviation. So I can see how many standard deviations are there from the mean to where I am. I like it. Okay. So take a minute, figure that out. Don't say it yet. Seven something negative negative point seven one. I don't know. Seven two nine. Is it seven three zero nine? Seven three? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let me stop for a minute. Of this not again. I understand we just got back from a break, right? Some of us are still like mentally in another place. I understand that more than you might realize. Uh, but does this all feel familiar? Right. What do I do now? Of course, what should I have done up here? I kind of bypassed this. Where should I shade? Shade to the right. Yeah, I want above. So I'm going to look up negative 0.73. Don't say anything. Negative 0.73. What area do you get? You're getting everything to the left of 90. Yeah, which is what? Let's see. Two, three, two, seven. Yeah, two, three, two, seven. Is that cool? Okay. And let me see. I really want you guys to really, really get this. Halfway, I got 50% below me. That makes sense. Because in a normal curve, the mean cuts it in half. As I start to move below that, I have less and less stuff below me. Why is it changing so quickly here? And then it kind of slows down the further I get. Actually, yeah. Why is it changing so quickly here? Because there's more stuff in here. So as I move down, I'm leaving more stuff behind me. There's less stuff in front of me. Are you guys kind of with me? Which is why it makes sense that if I know where I am in the picture, there should be a way to translate that into an area beyond that. So if I'm here, there should be a way to figure out what the area is beyond that because I've left so much behind me. The normal curve is so strictly defined that the areas have to be proportional. They have to be the same. Okay, maybe. Which is one big reason why I make you use the table instead of just pushing buttons. Right? I want you to have a little bit more connection to what the hell you're doing. So where is point two three two seven? Is that what it was? Yeah, it's here. You can do it, Jeff. Okay. So real quick, uh, I say this to my students a lot. The math is not going to be nice to you because math is not able to do anything. This is just freaking an idea. You need to be nice to yourself. The minute you look up a z-score, put that area below what you just looked up. There's no thought involved there. That's just what it is. Then you step back and you say, have I answered the question yet? And if you draw your picture nicely, you're being nice to yourself, you can see very quickly, no, I haven't found the damn side I want. You guys kind of like me, I always get people make really simple mistakes because they're not being nice to themselves. They don't identify what it is they just did. Yeah. I mean, does it help when you look at a problem and you say, hey, they're asking for stuff above. There's always going to be an extra step. They're asking for oh, yeah, below. Exactly. If they're asking for below, I just yeah. got to find that z-score and I've got my... The only score. time I'm not going to have extra work is if they're asking me a question for below. A certain value, less than something. If it's above or between, I'm going to have extra steps. Right. So, what is the correct answer then? One minus zero point two three two seven. Yeah. So seven six seven three. That's so cool. But yeah. <laughs> and again, for those of you who like the shortcut, if I look up positive point seven three. I get 7673. 
right? Not exactly David Blaine level of shit, but is he still a valid? Is he still relevant? David Blaine? Do you know David Blaine? Just, just All right. Jesus. It's so weird to get old, everybody. Because I, I've seen my references go over, and then and then a re new reference comes along, and then I watch that get, get wash over people. I'm like, okay, well, shit. I don't know what the hell's happened nowadays. Copperfield and <laughs> Magic is an illusion. Um, all right. Again, if you don't get this, okay, but it's just because of the symmetry and it's not that big of a shortcut, so you don't have to do it. Who cares? We got the answer already. We're golden, right? So let me ask you this question. What is the um, 14th percentile? Is that something I've asked before? Yeah, who cares? I want to know what the value is that is the 14th percentile. Yep. Same problem. Where would the 14th percentile be in the picture? Yeah, because this would be the 50th percentile, right? Because it's got half of it below. So 14th percentile should be down here somewhere. Now, obviously, I think you'll agree with me. The biggest mistake I see people make here is they'll look up 0.14 like this. And they'll think that this has something to do with the question. No, right? Is 0.14 a z-score? No, it's what I want. I want a z-score. 0.14 is the area. And again, I was nice to myself. I put the area up here. I only put z-scores down here. I want to do that for myself because they look like each other. Damn little things. So if I look up 0.14, where am I going to look for it? Obviously, it's a negative z-score, yes? So I'm going to look for it in here. This is where the percentile, some percentages are. So it's the closest you can get to 0.14. Yeah, right there. See that? That's the closest I could get. Which what's that Z score? Yeah, negative one point. Negative one point zero eight. 1.0, yes? 1.08. So everybody with me? So this tells you the first decimal place. This tells you the second decimal place. So 1.08. Does that actually answer the question? No, damn it. <laughs> right? I've got more work to do. I want to know the value that is P14. This is where the answer is. It is. Can somebody tell me where the answer is? What does that really mean? What's it mean, specifically? Distance from the moon. Specifically, yeah. Yeah. Right. good lord. Whatever this is, they need less or more of it. Oh yeah, okay. The number of steps away from here. Specific. The answer is? That many standard deviations. 1.08 standard deviations below the mean, yes? I don't even need a freaking formula to do this then. I need you to understand. Wouldn't I just start at the mean, and go down 1.8, 1.08 steps, 1.08 standard deviation. I would start at the mean, 111.3, and I would go down 1.08 of these. Yes? That comes straight from what a z-score means. But what's the formula? Mu plus z sigma. Well, what's mu? 111.3, what's Z? Negative 1.08, and what's sigma? Freaking 29. So it's the same thing. So this class is a definite place where you see very often I can do work without a formula because what's important, what's more important than a formula is the idea. Probabilities. If you use the formula sometimes, it's worse. The work you have to do is worse. If you just apply the idea, it's easier. I know I'm making a big deal out of this, but it's a common thread through a lot of mathematics. You can just use the formula and plug shit in, you'll get the same answer. Uh, so what is that, like 81? What is it, 79? 
I'm um, trying to do my head. 79 point? 4.79. 79 Nita. Okay. Shabow! I didn't give any units here, so normally be careful on a problem that has units. You need to put the units down. Yeah? Okay. All right. How are we doing? That, that's right now. This needs to be bread and butter. This needs to be in your wheelhouse. This, what other kind of thing can I say that you don't understand? Yes? Oh, it doesn't matter. Two, two is great. If you're not sure, and if I don't say two places is a good, good thing to do. I love it. Let me stop for a minute. Okay. Okay. So, let's come back to what we were doing last time. So last time we did some really weird stuff. Does anyone remember anything about the last lecture? Because I don't. No, I'm joking. Yes. It's basically the same thing. You're just changing your standard deviation to a standard. Here. Okay, you got it. You got it. And don't worry. You're fine. You're fine. It's really weird to understand this fully. So the standard deviation I'm normally given works for individual things. Individuals. So if this was like bowling scores for some team, yes, this would be individuals. I would expect somebody to have around 111.3 on this team, an individual. So this is how spread out the individuals are from each other or from the mean, right? If I have a sample of stuff and I ask a probability question, I want to compare that sample with all other samples. So, so when I do this picture, okay, when I make this picture, the hell does it really mean? If it's a normal distribution, most people will make the mean. So bowling score is not the best example for this because nobody can make 111.3 bowling score, but... You guys kind of with me. But if I talk about an average over a bunch of games, then yeah, that could work. You guys all with me. So an individual, several, the most common average score across a bunch of games was 111.3. Is it very likely an individual would be down here? No. In fact, we already know it's less than a quarter of the time somebody's down there. You guys with me? Okay. Okay. If I ask a question about a sample I've taken, a picture that relates individuals to each other won't do a damn thing for me. So I can compare an individual being here versus all other individuals and kind of tell what's the probability they're in that area. But if I've taken a sample and asking a question, what's the probability that a sample of 30 people have a score above 90? Then I need to compare them to all other samples, not all other individuals. Does that just make sense on the face of it? This standard deviation will always be for individuals. So I need to change it to be a standard deviation for groups. That's what came out of our little trip to Florida, alternate universe Florida, last time. right? I don't know how you feel about that trip we took or if you remember it. So let me tell you this. We went to Alter Universe, Florida. We did. If in our imaginations, we still did. Right? We all tripped out. Something went through. Um, today I want to do a very concrete example with you. It's going to be one of my most colorful ones yet. There's like, there's like two colors on this damn thing. I mean, come on. So let me give you this.
Yes. Yeah. All right, so I just remembered I wanted to do some of this before I gave it to you, but too bad you got it. So let's kind of look at this real quick. So instead of going to alternate universe Florida and pretending like we're talking to people, I put four pieces of paper in a half. You can imagine that pretty easy. Right, so still, I don't have a half, so I'm still not completely concrete. Um, you agree with me that the probability that I reach in and pick out a two is one out of four? Yeah. Yes, totally. I love it. So therefore, the XP of X table would look like that. Right? Okay, so very quickly, um, can you guys remember, so, and before I forget, if I make a histogram out of this, this isn't really this kind of distribution, but what's it look like? Uniform. uniform. Can somebody tell me why it really isn't uniform? There you go. It's not continuous. Could I pick the number 1.73? No. Nope. But it does look uniform, correct? In fact, it's kind of something we call uniform, even though we understand it's not continuous, because they all have the same probability. You guys kind of with me, but it's not uniform. Uniform probability equations wouldn't work. Okay. Can you remember twenty-first? No, stop. How to get the mean and the standard deviation using your calculator? Oh, Jeff, you're deleting everything. That's not smart. Let's try this again, buddy. There you go. Without making the x p of x and the x squared p of x, do you guys remember the shortcut to get the calculator to tell you the mean and the standard deviation? Anybody? It's okay if the answer is no. Okay, so let's do it. Put in there 1, 2, 3, 4. Put in there 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Now go to stat, calc, one bar stats. If you have the old calculator that doesn't have this, it just says one bar stats, put L1 comma L2. If you have this calculator, put L1 is the list, L2 is the freaky list. Calculate. So let me know if you need some help. So this is the way you could check your work in chapter four. In the table? Oh, yeah, the same stuff I've got here. Okay. Yeah. Then you go to stat, calc, one bar stats. So again, if you have this kind of setup, you put L1, L2. If it just says one bar stats, put L1 comma L2. Enter. Let me know if you need some help. So this is how you can check your work on a problem that I give you on a test or something. And also how to check commission is match go to. Uh, Yes. One fourth of the time it would be one, so forth. Stop for a minute. Did everybody get this? That is curious, yes? You could, yeah, totally.
No, I'm sorry. Well, we already have the one verse S. We already have the L1. We'll make this L2. Because L2 is the frequency S. It's the relative frequency. That's the percentage, right? Remember that? Okay. All right, and again, as pointed out, you could do x p of x and x squared p of x, which is what I'm going to need you to do on the test, for example. But just to check your work or just to get this shit quick, we could do this. Okay. So let's fill this in. Why does it make sense the mean is exactly right in the middle? Why does it make sense that the mean is exactly in the middle? Why isn't it pulled one way or the other? They all have the same weight. Yeah. Whenever it's equally weighted, the mean is going to be where it normally would be. It's only if one thing was weighted more than another. If I made one weighted a little bit more, then the mean would have been smaller than 2.5. Because it would have gotten pulled that direction a little more. You guys at all with me? Okay. And the standard deviation we got was 1.118, roughly. Now do me a favor. Just out of nowhere, and some of you guys might remember this, but can you calculate 1.118 divided by the square root of 2? Can you just do that for me? What you get? 0.79. So you get 0.791. Okay. So right now, that doesn't necessarily mean shit to us. Some of you guys might remember that when we had bigger and bigger samples, do you remember our picture got skinnier? Kind of came into the center. I don't know if you guys remember that when we went to Florida. And the standard deviation got smaller. I actually gave you the formula for it. Standard deviation divided by square root of n. So look what I'm about to do. I'm about to take samples of size 2. So this is my prediction as to what the standard deviation of these sample means is going to be. So what did we do when we went to Florida in our minds? We went to Florida and we took, uh, we talked to individuals first, and then I took samples of size 10, samples of size, I can't remember now, 50, whatever, and I plotted their sample means. So if I'm gonna take all samples of size two, one example would be I picked a number one, drop it back in, and I picked a number one again. That would be one sample of size two. What else could I get? Pick the number one, drop it back in, and then pick the number two. So what I've done here, because I'm a nice guy sometimes, is I've given you all the possible samples of size two. These are all the things that could possibly happen, yes? I like it. What's the sample mean for this sample? Yeah. It's a sample mean for one and two. Yeah, keep going. You'll pick up on a nifty little pattern happening as you go. So you can double check me, but if you take, for example, the average of three and two, it's gonna be two and a half right in the middle, right? The average of four and one is gonna be right in the middle of those, two and a half. Is that okay? So this is just like me going to Alternate University Florida, taking a group of 10 people and then plotting their average age. Then I go and take another group of 10. And I do that until I take all the possible groups of size 10. If I wanted to do that problem concretely, that would suck. Because a state the size of Florida, how many groups of size 10 could you make? A stupid number, right? If you try to do it in the calculator, you're going to kind of have a little smoke coming out of it. No, it's going to just say uh, overflow error, more than likely. OK. I really want you with me as to what this is. The very abstract example I did last time. This is just like me taking groups and then plotting each sample mean. So now my data is no longer one, two, three, four. My data is all of these. So how many data points do I have? 16. I like it. What's the most common thing to get? Most common mean that I got? 2.5, right? There's four of those. You guys agree with me. 
Right. All right, so look at this. Do you see what I did here? How many times did I get a one, a sample mean of one? One out of 16, beautiful, which is 0.0625. So that's how I created this. Are you guys all with me? Can you guys please do exactly what we did up here for this? Figure out its mean and its standard deviation. I'll do it with you. Let me see. By the way, here's the histogram. Would you agree that that looks more normal than that did? Yep. Hell yeah. Of course, that wasn't much of a, a bar to, to kind of like overcome. All right. So what are you guys getting for the mean? Unsurprisingly. Has everybody got that yet? No? Okay. So I put in there this stuff here, right? Just put in there list one, list two from here. So then if I hit stat, calc, one of our stats, list one, list two. So I got a mean of 2.5, not surprising. And I got a standard deviation of 0.791. Does that look familiar? Yeah, it's the prediction we made. So, and, and by the way, just so you really get this, this is still not an example of a problem you're gonna have to do. This is still just the idea behind what we're gonna do. If I take samples of size two, we calculated what the standard deviation becomes. We calculated it directly. We got it to be 0 0.791. We already knew what it was going to be because I took the standard deviation divided by the square root of two because I'm taking a sample of size two. So if I took samples of size three, what would happen to this? Can you guys imagine if I took samples of size three? So what's one thing? One, one, one. What's another thing? One, one, two. One, one, three. One, one, four. One, two, one. One, two, two. One, two, three. One, two, four. I haven't even had two first yet. Holy shit. Wouldn't that box become stupid big? Do you want to do that? I don't want to do it either. And I love math. I don't want to do that shit. So, thank God, we have a way to know ahead of time exactly what the standard deviation would be. If I took a samples of size three instead of two, what would the standard deviation become? 1.118 divided by the square root of three, whatever the hell that is, that would be the standard deviation for all groups of size three. So I would not, I could do the same thing. My box would be stupid big, one, 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 two, and so forth. I guess, and then I could make an XP of X, and I could do all the same shit. I could do it all over. But then imagine what if I took every sample of size 11. How big does that box get now? 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2. Okay, Jeff, we get the idea. Okay. You guys, you guys, I don't want to talk for a minute. Dividing with the standard deviation. If I just take what the original standard deviation was for the individuals and divide it by the square root of how big my sample size is, I can shortcut all that shit. I, can, I know that's going to be the theoretical standard. I know it's going to be what it becomes. Okay, maybe. I don't know if it's really big. Oh, look, somebody in the back. This is what? Not really. Uh, okay. So, I've done what I can in terms of the idea. Now, what happens to us in a damn problem, dear God, Jeff, right? What's a problem going to look like for me? Okay, here we go. By the way, when does all this stuff kick in? 
two things have to happen for all the stuff. When do I do sigma divided by square root of n? Two things have to happen. I have to take a sample, because then I get n. And I have to ask about the sample mean. Because what's the whole idea of this change in the standard deviation? The one they give me is for individuals. If they ask me a question about a sample of people or things, I need the standard deviation that works for, us, for groups of size, whatever. So the very first problem on this, what's it asking you about? A group or a single person? Very first problem. Single person. Single person. So that's a chapter six problem. So do part A very quickly. That's going to be a review like we just did earlier um, with the bowling scores, whatever it was I was thinking of. So, yes, so there's one person. So therefore, the standard deviation they give me is the standard deviation that works for that problem because it's talking about individuals. Which problem am I going to have to change the standard deviation for? Yeah, so which problem is that? C. C. So my first question is, can I, is this a normal distribution? They say it is. Yep, they'd say it is. Cool. Yeah. What's the, what's the, what's the of the ah, yeah, yeah. So if they don't tell me it's normal, what sample size saves my ass? Any sample size greater than 30. 30. How do we know that? Because we fed into a supercomputer we saw that. They just told us any sample over 30, you're normal to know. Yes. No matter how freaky the distribution starts off as. So the nicer the distribution is, and that's why I know you guys are tired of me. I know I'm always trying to talk about ideas and you're like, just tell me how to do a problem. Did this one start off nice? This is not normal, correct? But is this nice? I would say this is nice. It's uniform, it's symmetric, it's nice. It, I only had to take samples of size two for it to become really freaking normal. If I gave you this problem and said, does this look normal? You're gonna say, hell yeah, it looks normal. It looks freaking normal as shit. Yes? Okay. I don't know if you use those exact words. But, how weird could my distribution start off looking like? Very weird. So we just say n has to be greater than 30. No matter what it looked like at the beginning, it will become normal enough. So let me catch up to you guys. Um, what goes in the middle here? Yeah, the mean is 2.9. What else do we want to put down there? Three. Three. And again, I want to say this, make sure that three is on the correct side of 2.9. Some people don't quite understand what this is trying to do for you. And where am I going to shade? Sorry. Yes. So then I already know my answer is going to be less than 0.5. Less than 50%, less than 0.5. Kick ass. So my picture should help me. Now somebody else tell me what's the next step. Yeah, find the z-score. So this is an old problem, and it really isn't that old, but compared to chapter seven, this is old. This is a chapter six problem. Make a z-score, look it up, do one minus, because we want above instead of below, right? That same old thing. So how do I set up my z-score formula? What do I put in there? Yeah, 2.90. Yep, my data point minus the mean divided by the spread. And this is for individuals, and the question is about an individual. Perfect. So you should end up with like 0.327. What is it? 3.22, so 0.32, okay. In my head, it was pretty good. Okay. It was right there. I should quit. I'm sorry, guys. Math boy. So look that up. See what you get. Come 
really want to make sure you guys are with me. Part A is not a problem that we have to apply what we just did. Part A is a chapter six problem. I'm talking about one thing, in this case, one person. So I don't have to change anything. When you look at point three two, what do you get? Yeah, six two five five. Is that the answer? No. It is not. You are correct, sir. What is the answer? Point three seven four five. Three seven four five. Okay. By the way, this happens a lot. Do you see how there's a lot of parts to this problem? So I get somebody to do a lot of work and that I can't tell what the answer is. I got numbers all over the damn place. Please make it really clear what the answer is. Box that thing off, put little stars around it, put big arrows at it. Okay. Part B is still not a problem that's new. Where's the top 7%? I'm still talking about a person, yes? Top 7% would be where? 93rd percentile. I love it. 93rd percentile up there somewhere. So this is going to be one where I have a percentage. you got to look up the z-score and make it into an x-score, right? So take a minute. Don't say anything. Try to find the z-score for an area of 0.93. Believe it or not, that says 0.93. Oh, it's not a No. Just kidding. No, you should, you're not. Don't worry. You should see my fives. They're S's. No, same here. So I... I can't stress to you how important what we're doing right now is. Most of the rest of this class is going to be based on the ideas built in 6 and 7. Does that, do you understand? So if you're having any trouble with chapter 6, chapter 7 is still kind of new. So it's okay if you're still having some trouble with that, but chapter 6, part A of this problem should have been like nothing. Of course, I understand it's also been spring break. I get that. So what z-score do you guys get? Uh, 1.48. Ooh, in stereo. Yeah, 0.93. This is interesting. I get what looks like two possibilities, but which one's closer? 9306. 9306. I love it. That's eight away. That's six away. So then it'll be, oh my gosh, 1.48. Eight. Yes. By the way, if you said 1.475, tier, which doesn't translate to bonus points, but still is, because it's roughly in the middle, correct? You don't have to do that. You just go for the closest one if there's the closest one. How do I convert that back into a bone density? Yeah. So I'll take the mean, and I'll go up 1.48 steps. Where'd they go? There they are. Say 3.36 grams per square centimeter. In there. I think I looked at, I, I made this worksheet a long time ago now. So I'm not sure if the numbers are still correct, but I looked it up. I remember looking this up. Some of you guys might not be overly concerned about your bone density at the moment. Uh, but it's a generally good thing to know because you don't have to be old for this to kind of like affect you, right? So some of you guys might be very concerned about your bone density. It depends on your family history, all that kind of stuff. Okay, enough of the medical advice moment. Okay. You know you're there when you suddenly start paying, paying attention to those senior commercials. <laughs> yeah. And so what's the answer we got here? Oh, I'm sorry. 3.36 grams oh, per square three centimeter. Three, sure, okay. Yeah. Now we get some new stuff finally. So I'm being very nice on this problem because the, uh, all the new stuff is predicated on two things. We take a sample and then I ask about the sample mean. You with me? That sample mean is gonna live in a new distribution. It's gonna live in that distribution of sample means. 
So the old variation they gave me no longer applies. That is for individuals. And I've got a group of 22 people waiting for me to figure this shit out, right? You guys got it? So the very first thing we have to do is what? Convert to numbers into each. Yeah. You want two decimal places? Three. So the new standard deviation, and here's the symbol we use for the new standard deviation. I think I had it on that chart. This is one symbol, yes? This is the standard deviation of sample means. This is not sigma divided by x. This is not any of that weird shit. This is sigma sub x bar. Just like the slope was y2 minus y1, remember that? The two is just the second y, whoop de do. So the little subscript is just a specific standard deviation. It's the standard deviation for means. In fact, really quickly, I forgot to say this earlier, if you figure out the standard deviation, what's it actually show you? Sigma x, the standard deviation of individual values, sigma x. So what's this one? The standard deviation for sample means, sigma sub x bar, instead of sigma sub x. Okay, that one didn't hit as well. Okay, so then how do I get it? I take the old one, 0.31, that was good for individual women, and divide by the square root of... Say again? 22. 22, yes. 22 women. I always get the weirdest things thrown in here. This has always got to be a sample size. This is always N. If you put a decimal in there, something's gone horribly wrong. Don't go cutting people up. <laughs> 21.7 women. No! Stop it. Don't want any real life Dexters out there. So, what do you get for that? 0.066. All right, and then here's the funny thing. That's it for the new shit, right? How do I, and then it becomes the same old problem. I still have the same question, correct? The mean greater than three, isn't that the same question I asked up here? So I still have, the mean is still the same. What was it, Jeff, 2.9? Still asking about three. Still make a z-score out of three. The difference now, shit, I'm sorry. I <laughs> suck with projectors. The difference now is I'm not going to put 0.31 down there. I'm going to put 0.066. Yeah. Now, of course, you have to be at least three. So you can put, I think you said 0.661 if you want to. So you can take this out, whatever, but at least three places, right? So what do you get for this? Uh, is that 1.5? I'm doing too much money. Let me see. Oh, uh, 1.52. Yeah. Let me stop for a minute. So, just to kind of remind you guys, when I take samples, bless you, the whole idea is the new picture suddenly gets skinnier. Everything rushes to the middle. It gets skinnier. So it makes sense that relatively I am further away now. What's this? If I look at 1.52, what do you get? On my Z-score chart, what do you get? 9397. 9, 5, 5, 7. So when I do 1 minus that... What did I get? 0. 0.0, 6, 4, 3. So what percentage of women, of groups of 22 women, sorry, would have bone densities above 3 grams per square centimeter? 6.43%. What percentage of individual women have a bone density above 3? 37.45%, uh, right? So, so this is exactly the same thing as... If I asked you to go out and randomly pick a person, would it be weird if you pick somebody who's like six foot three? Yeah. Would it be very weird? Let's say that. Would you go, oh my god? No, no, no. that's uncommon. If you go out and randomly pick 22 people and their average height is six foot three, you're with the NBA. That's some weird shit. Because a group of 22 people, their average height should be closer to the real average height. You guys kind of with me? You intuitively know this. 
If I take a group of people, their average should be closer to the real average. If I took one person in here, right, uh, in this group, yeah, let me talk about a different class. If I went to a different class and I picked one person and they were 50 years old, would that just shock the shit out of you? No. If I took a group of 12 people and the average age was 50, yes, yes, then you're curious, what's that class about, right? You guys kind of follow? That is well beyond what you would expect for a group, because a group of students should be closer to the true average. You intuitively know this, and that's what this is saying. If I take a group of people, they should be closer. So what's the probability they're far away from the average? It gets down, 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 the bigger the sample I take. Yes? What would that be like on this sheet, for example? I mean, the individual probability is 37. Yeah, yeah. But the, the group probability is 6.4. If it was backwards, we'd like know there was a mistake because math tells us yes. the opposite should yes. be trending. Yes. The bigger our sample, the more we should trend. Uh, yeah, towards the, the amount the that's further away from the mean should go down. The whole thing should skinny, should go towards the mean. Okay. Well, let me ask. I'll try to do the second problem. Oh, wait. Number two here. This is true, by the way. Although this first link doesn't work anymore, I don't know if anybody ever goes to my links, but so I'm sorry about that. I don't know why they took that down. Those assholes. They don't want you to know. No, they don't. Probably because it's now 79 years. Yeah, it went down. It's, cool. it's gone down. We had state. a recession, then we had a pandemic. I don't know if you guys know about that. Average life expectancy, all of it. Just, yes, everywhere it's down. And it differs by state. Very true. Hawaii is California's pretty good, relatively. It's like really expensive, but Hawaii has the longest life expectancy of all 50 states. Uh, yeah, I, I think I added a few months on my life when I went there. <laughs> you made up some time. Yes. Unfortunately, I also lose a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're literally trading time for money. That's why they say money. Yes. Would yes. yes. you like to live longer? Hey. It's that movie I never saw. You can buy the years. Time. That was, I want to watch that movie. Will, Will is, I think. I can't remember. It's been a while. Where everyone has like a, a yes. running clock on their yes. wrist, and it's yes. when you'll die. Yes. And you can buy. I'm pretty sure that's the premise. Yep. I haven't seen it. Dystopian future. Sorry, guys. Keep going. Wait, you want us to find. I want you to do the problem. <laughs> You're just asking us if it's okay to use the system. Oh, yeah. So for part A, why is it okay? Do I say that it's normal anywhere in there? Do I say that you're working with a normal distribution? No, but we're over 30. But there you go. Okay. That's my point. Why is it okay to use a z-score chart? I can only use a z-score chart when I have a normal distribution. So how do I know this is gonna be normal because the sample size is? But is it at least 30, that's the rule, or more than 30? At least 30. At least 30. I'm sorry, sorry, it's more than 30, yeah. Oh, so it can't be exactly 30, it better be 31. Yeah, if it's exactly 30, then technically no. So if it's more than 30, more, if my sample size is more than 30 and I plot all the sample means, that's going to be normal enough. What if yeah. you can 30? Huh? Yeah, what if that happens on the problem? Just say, yeah. no, say no to it. You need kids. <laughs> yeah. Now, if the book gives you that, you can kick the authors in the book. Just randomly go up to them and say, yes, and then you get bam! <laughs> and they're not far away, actually. They, from our little college, they're here in California. That's a free book. Like your full max. <laughs> By the way, guys, uh, let me say this before I forget. Look at me. Look at me. If I take a sample of thirty-seven infants and I try to follow them over life to see their life expectancy, does the graph I make, if I plot all thirty-seven infants, does it have to be normal? No. Nope. No. Just because of a sample bigger than 30, if I plot the sample, it can look like anything. What will be normal then? If I plot every group of 37 infants, their life expectancies, that will be normal. Do you see? Do you understand? If I just take 37 infants and I plot their ages, does that have to be normal? No! It could be any damn thing. If I plot every group of 37 infants in their life expectancy, I'm going to get a normal curve. Are you guys at all more cool? Like, no, Jeff. Stop it. Just let me do the problem. Okay. Do the problem.
for the sample mean standard deviation, or standard deviation sample mean? That is four. Oh yeah, so it's always at least three places. Okay. Yeah. So if we do more than that, it, we won't be like no, you five points on the test or something. You do twelve, I'll just say yeah, I don't know. I don't see how. I'm not gonna go that far because I'll lose time on the quiz. Like. Mm -hmm. So to get the new standard deviation, what do you do? Convert it using the uh, one you're given divided by the square root. So what's the old standard deviation? By the way, the words new and old are just my own weird ways of saying things. I should say the standard deviation for individuals versus the standard deviation for groups of size, 37, but that just takes too long to say. So what's the old standard deviation? The old one was 14. 14.9. So the one they gave us is good for individual infants, but I have a problem about a group of 37, so I cannot use that number. I cannot use this. I just, I really want that just to make sense immediately. I understand if the y is at the square root of n I divide by, I understand if that doesn't make sense, but the fact that it has to change should make sense. So when I divide it by the square root of the sample size, I'm converting it into a spread of groups of size 37. How spread out would they be from each other, from the mean of them? Um, so what's the going? Hold on, let me think about it. 2.5 something? No? 2.4 something? 2.45? Okay. 2.45... New standard deviation. Anybody got that? 2.4496. 2.4496. So 2.45 will work. By the way, so you get 2.4496, right? Well, there's more to it, but that's why. Sure, sure, sure. But if you want to round to this place, this is going to bump it up, so it's actually going to go up to 50. Yep. Right? That always trips people up. That's the weirdest part about rounding. You're it's this weird little uh, dominoes much. thing where it falls back. Yeah. You're so this goes up, which makes this go up. Yes. Say again. Three places. Yeah. After this. Yeah. Three places. Yeah. Why? What's up? You're fine. So it's four four nine six. I got that five. Good. Counting two as a Oh, okay, okay. I love my sig fig people. So, have you taken some science? Okay. Um, <laughs> the real full story would be related to sig figs, but since I don't want to spend time talking about sig figs, I just say it's got to be at least three places. Okay, okay. So, if you made it to 4496, that's fine also, right? It has to be at least three decimal places. There's everybody with me. Okay. It's warm in here. I feel a little drunk. I'll be all right. So if I want to make this Z score, I can do it now. What goes in the middle? 80.2. What was 80.2? And I'm curious about less than 75 years. So I want to change 75 into a Z score. What am I going to divide that by? Good, 2.45, the, the spread for, in, uh, for groups of 37 infants. Okay, I like it. Very strange problem we're doing. When is this kid gonna die? So then, what do you get for the z-score there? It's about negative two. It's gonna be like negative 2.02. What? 2.12, okay, that's fine. Trying to do this in my head, so I'm giving myself plenty of leeway there. So you guys got is everybody okay? You guys doing okay? It's so hot in here. I know, I agree. It is warm. I don't know why. It's all the steam from our thing. Well, that thing back there, does it say 69? Can you see it? Sorry. 71. Right there. Oh, 71? Really?
Oh, it's going to be exciting when we get summer. Okay. You know, for a new building, this place sucks. It just, tor just, torture it just tortures us, right? Door doesn't work. AC doesn't work. Outlets are all upside down. We've been waiting so long. The state hired some quality. Yeah. Every other door works. The thermostat lies. But it's a building. We don't care. Math people were like, we got a building to complain about now. It's Is it a building? <laughs> don't, don't, don't say anything. I don't want anything to fall out. So, do you, are you guys understanding that after coming up with an insane example about going to some freaky Florida, doing the thing with the taking the numbers out of the hat, all that shit to explain the idea, the nuts and bolts of what's going to happen to you is one extra step on top of what you normally do in chapter six. You change the standard image. And then everything else, you make a z-score, you hook it up, you get the area, right? That is the nuts and bolts of what's going to happen to you in relation to this whole idea. Did I say this last time? It's called the central limit theorem, just so you... Yes? I don't know if you guys are. So it's called the central limit theorem, this idea of when n is greater than 30, it becomes normal enough, and the standard deviation becomes standard deviation divided by the square root of n, right? That's the central limit theorem. So in case you see that in the homework, that's what that's referencing, right? What is it? Hmm? I know it's the title of the chapter. So the bigger my, stand, my sample size gets, oh, yeah. the closer I get to the actual mean. So if I took all of Florida, <laughs> my mean would suddenly become the exact true mean. Yes? Okay. So in the limit of taking the entire population, it, it gets closer and closer to the mean, so we call it the central limit here. It gets closer and closer to the center. Okay. Um, so what did you guys get when you looked at negative 2.12? Yeah. 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 yeah, 0, 1, 7. So like a 1.7% chance of somebody living less than 75 years. So some of you guys, anybody near born in 2004 in California? Me, me, me. Yes? Me. Okay. So you have a 1.7% uh, chance of, of dying before you hit 75. Yay. Oh, that's pretty low. I can say it the other way around. There's a 98.3% chance you'll live longer than 75 years. So plan your retirement accordingly. Okay. And you know, like retirement? Yep. How much money are you going to need? Okay. All right. How are you guys feeling about this? I... I'm always curious, and I understand that some of you guys are like, I can't think, Jeff. It is warm. Okay. But again, I took you through a lot of shit. I did, because I, I want you to understand the idea. But that's all it does. That is all it does. So if you understand Chapter 6, you almost can't help but understand Chapter 7, because it adds one step. It's just a question of when do you do that? When do I do that? When I take a sample mean, I'm sorry, when I take a sample and I ask about the sample. If those two things happen, I know to change the standard deviation. I can't use the one they gave me. I've got to change it. What a question. I lost the other. I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. That's the, that's the teach until they forget their question approach. Okay. Uh, try part C. I'm curious if you guys even understand what the hell that means. Wait, so yeah, you just do like five and five and then the middle. Yeah, I want the middle. 90%. How many Z scores you're going to have to find? Two. Two. Oh. Well, I'm bounding the middle 90, so there's going to be one down here and one up here. So try to draw the picture. The middle 90%, can you figure out either one of those Z scores? That's okay, do it. But we don't subtract the Z scores from each other. We subtract Hell no. Numbers. Never subtract Z scores. Yes. That's going to be empirical. Though, right? No. Empirical would be 95, but even then, don't use empirical because it's an approximation. So 95%, according to empirical rule, that's between two, yeah? Yeah. In reality, it's 1.96 and negative 1.96. So we're better now. We're better than the empirical rule. I want to see negative 1.96 and 1.96 because we can use the z-score chart. Yeah. So once you find the z-score for the negative, you can it's going to be the same, same thing, just the positive. positive. Yeah. I love it. There's a symmetry. It's symmetric. Look at, look at. 
the formula for how many steps you are from the mean is always the mean subtracting from it or the mean adding to it? So there's something kind of interesting that happens here. Okay, let me catch up to you guys. Wait, then you add those two and then subtract from the All right. Middle 90%, right? Okay. I want to find this Z score, right? I need both of these. Does everybody agree, since that's the middle, whatever that is, that's the positive same number? Does that make sense? Because it's symmetric, right? How do I find this Z score? What area is below it? Careful. Five. Five. 90 in, 10 out, 5% on that side, right? So look up 0 0.05. I'll tell you now, it should be a little asterisk, dude. A little asterisk, dude. Anybody find that it's a little asterisk, dude? So if we look up 0.05. Yeah, I get here, right? It's right in the middle, so it's negative 1.645. Because both of these are equally spaced, so it's right in the middle. Right in the middle of 164 and 165, so that's 1645. That's right in the middle. So this is negative 1.645, so this one is 1.645. I love it. Now here's the trick. Here's what you got to be careful about. I want to know the sample mean ages. So if I want to use this formula, two things. One thing is really easy. I got a plus and a minus, correct? Is that okay? Because don't I have a positive and a negative z-score? And the other thing is, can I use this? No. Nope. I have to use the new one. Same formula is the exact same formula. I just have two things. So I could write this out as two separate mu minus mu plus, but I can just make it a plus or minus. And I cannot use that standard deviation because I want the sample means. So I got to use the right spread. Now we already know what this is. So it's going to be the mean, give or take. Oh man, poor little dude. Gave me all you could. All right. Back to the red. This is the one time I get to use my red marker. That in the final exam. All right. 80.2, give or take, 1.645. And what's our new standard deviation? 2.45. I love it. So what I would do is I would calculate what the plus or minus part is. Run out of paper, damn it. Let me put it down here. 80.2, give or take. What's 1.645 times 2.45? I'm sorry, 2.45, yes. Where did we get the 2.45? New standard deviation, yeah. That is the standard deviation that works for groups of, uh, what was it, 37? Yes. So I want the sample mean ages. So I'm still talking about a group of 37. So I've got to use that standard deviation. So what's 1.645 times 2.45? 4.030. Okay. So then I can do 80.2 minus 4.03. And 80.2 plus 4.03. So anywhere from 76.17 up to 84.23. So 76.17 up to 84.23. Yes? I just wanted to verify that in that formula because I was putting the freaking subtraction or plus in the wrong place when I had my parentheses in the calculator. So the, the sign in front of the z-score is going to dictate whether it's the plus or minus. Yeah. Or yeah. Because I was putting it inside the parentheses and I shouldn't have Oh, shit. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. That'll freak things out. I getting 76 over and over. I'm like, I need the bigger number now. So okay. Make some adjustments. So what does this really mean? Those are your two... 90%. Yeah. 
the data is between those Of two the two groups two. of 37 infants, we'll have an average age between these two. An average life expectancy, I should say. All right, to make it really more, we'll die before they are whatever in age in here. Yes? You guys kind of with me? Well, you said before, but like up to. Up to, yes. Without a dying. This is your answer, yes. If you're outside of that, you're in the 10%. You're in the 10%, yes. So 10% of them will live to be long, older than 84 years old. And that's some of you guys, right? 2005, 2006, I think it went up a little bit. And then 2007, 8, it went down a bit because of the recession we had, which affected people. I'm wondering how they calculated that. They say infants born, but there's a, it's more than just your birth. There's a lot that goes it's into the life environment, environment yes. pollution, which is why it's different in different states. It's different in different cities within states. Yeah. So, yeah. In Fresno or some other state, there's a lot of air pollution. Yes. A lot. Yeah. Okay, so. I want to point out a couple things on the practice test, for example. Um, And again, I, I really, it's really interesting to me when I do this. This is one of those things that I love. Yeah, one of these guys? Yeah. Okay, and you got the other one, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, this is an idea that I love, and the students hate <laughs> the idea of it, but you eventually kind of get... Did I give you one that's got all the writing on it? No. No, okay. Well, here's that one, okay. Um, But the actual doing a problem kicks so much ass. I don't know if anybody in here is to the point yet where you could say chapter six is relatively nice compared to some other stuff we've done. Chapter six is kind of, should be relatively nice. Um, Again, some of the issues would be the way that they word some of the problems. Okay. This adds that one extra step on. So looking at this homework, can you, uh, homework, looking at this practice test, can anyone see the pr- a problem where I have to use central limit theorem? Well, I'll tell you this, there are two of them. Huh? Five. Which part? B? D. D, yes. 5D. I took a sample, and I'm asking about the... Oh, the name for it is the last theorem, right? Central limit theorem. Central limit theorem. Central, Central limit, limit theorem. Oh, that's it. And the limit that your sample size becomes the same as the population size, you're going to tend towards the center. Central limit theorem. CLT. I sometimes call it the chicken lettuce tomato. Because I'm very weird. Right? Central limit theorem. <coughs> four, four, number four part E. That's yes. Still a good so five D. You guys see that would be a central limit theorem problem. What does that mean? I can't use the standard relation they gave me. I have to change it. Divided by the square root of in this case. Thirty-three. Yeah. So the standard relation they give me, thirty-four point four eight. I can use that for these. Because why? Oh, because they're for individuals. Yeah. And well, here's the funny thing. What would N be? What's N? How many houses am I picking? So what's N? One. Yes, N is the sample size. I'm going to take one. That's my sample size of one. So what's the standard deviation divided by the square root of one? Does it change? No. So the formula still works. Because, so we're always using that formula, sort of. Just if I have a sample size of one, it doesn't change it. Because, okay. All right. I love some of you guys are like, I tolerate you, but it's warm and I can't do it too well. Yes? I don't think I got that one. Oh, here. You're welcome. That's so easy. See, that's a good spot to be in. Mm-hmm. And somebody else said there was one other place. I agree. So 5D, uh, 1 and 2. You definitely have to use central limit theorem. There's one other place. 4E. Did I take a sample? Yeah. Yes. Am I asking about the sample me? No. Oh, yeah, y- yes. I totally am, yes? 
Therefore, this, now this one's weird. I want to warn you ahead of time. This is a problem that I would actually not give you on the test. Because what kind of problem is this? I would give you part A all day. I would give you part B all freaking day. Part C all freaking day. Part D, no. I wouldn't give you part D, why not? Because I already told you, I'm not gonna give you a mean standard deviation of a uniform curve problem, right? And the homework, you gotta do it. And I don't seem to care. Because I, I want you to realize, what's the big theme I've been doing every time you learn a new distribution? I always have to be able to find two things, the mean, so I want you to know, if I have a uniform distribution, there's a way to figure out the mean standard deviation. Yes? A plus B over 2, square root of B minus A squared over 12, that kind of shit. Remember that? No, it's okay. Did we cover it in the last one? No worries, no worries. You just have to throw stuff in for the homework. Yes? So I don't have to memorize that? No, and we're not going to write it on a formula sheet. Because you're not going to ask. Because we're not crazy. Exactly, because I'm not going to ask. Okay. Now, why did I put it on this test, on this practice test? Number one is, I'm not grading this shit, so I don't care. Number two, I don't care what the distribution was to begin with. The central limit theorem kicks in. If I take a sample and I ask about the sample mean, that's my point with this problem. It is a uniform distribution, correct? I can figure out the mean and standard deviation, can't I? In fact, let's do this one together. What's A and B for this problem? Two and eight. So what's the mean? <laughs> five, yes. The mean is five. Standard deviation is this weird ass thing, B minus A, eight minus two. B minus A squared divided by 12. What's that, Jeff? Square root of three, which is 1.7 something. I, I still memorize the square root of three. I'm very disappointed in myself. 1.732. You guys with me? Wait, B minus A squared over... 12, yeah. Why is it bigger? Sorry. It just is? It's just like the doctor having somebody say, why is it bigger on the inside? I'm just wondering if that's... I can't remember... Or if it's not like N or something. I have to check. In case anybody is truly curious... I can put the proof up on Canvas. I think I said I would before, and I just, I don't remember if I did. You're, you're, I'm just wondering if it's totally part of the original formula. And all it is part of the original formula, yeah. Yes. All right, you guys with me? You can plug this stuff in and kind of double check me? Yeah. Yeah? That's Not a bad idea, because it did in my head. Um, so now, I'm taking a sample of size 43. Can I use this? What is this good for? Absolutely not. No, it's good for something. What's it good for? Individual. it Individuals. And on part D, I'm, I'm sorry, part E, I'm talking about groups of size 43. So I cannot use this anymore. The first thing I want to do for this problem is Convert change it. By taking a numerator and dividing it by the square root of 43. 43, I love it. Then I can convert each of these into a z-score, look them up, get the area, subtract, blah, blah, blah. You guys kind of with me? Of course, I'll do that on the answer key. Okay. So I'm not going to finish up now because I'm going to do the answer key and I'll give it to you. Let's call it there. It's very warm. Mm -hmm. And get the keys back into the ship. And, uh, we first day back. Wow. That was a good amount of Yeah. Don't tell that. <laughs> if you're upset that I'm not giving you your money's worth, I'm not. I can give you my dean's number. <laughs> this has happened. This has happened. This has happened. Really, so he was upset at me. How many times did I let you out early? Thank you. I don't think that's a lot. All right, so next time we'll, I'll have the answer key for the practice test. We'll make the formula sheets. We'll review, come with all your questions from homework. Try to do as much as you can out of chapter seven. Yeah. Yes. What's up? Oh. Thank you.